mode of pediatric patients with uh, heart of glam that's very aggressive. I'm also going to give you a bit of perspective on our whole clinical heart T cell program to sort of explain how we got to the childhood trial. So I've had an excellent lead in from Lisa who's covered what heart T cells are and the introduction from Ganesh and Lisa is great just then so I'm hoping you understand the concept of the phase one clinical trial which is where the space we're working in which is very preliminary. We don't have that kind of placebo control, it's just really testing primarily for safety. So this is the trial we have over mass stress, this is not a glioblastoma or a brain cancer trial, this is a CAR T cell therapy trial um, that Professor Michael Brown is running at Royal Adelaide Hospital in patients with melanoma. So this has been open since 2014 and I think this is where the difference comes with testing a biological, like a CAR T cell, compared to a standard drug. Um, those <laughs> phase one trials can be conducted pretty rapidly. Whereas with the biological, we have to make it for each patient. So I'll go into that in a minute, but it's quite time consuming. And the other reason this trial has been open so long is the patient group we started with, those melanoma patients in 2014, did not have a lot of treatment options. And they had very poor um, survival if they had metastatic advanced disease. Um, and since then, melanoma treatment has been revolutionized by the immune checkpoints of this, this key trigger, or Pembroke, you heard, Nevo, um, work incredibly well which is great for them, so they've gone off our trial. And we've now widened um, the trial to include some other solid tumor types. So we've treated nine patients so far. And the first goal that we've met here um, is feasibility. And this is really important because CAR T cells are such a complex product to make. We've shown that we can make them here um, at SA Pathology. Now, Lisa was talking before about when could this become widely available, and that kind of scale of production approach, um, which we don't have here in Australia, um, but what we can do is do a kind of boutique manufacturing, so making one product for one patient, one at a time, um, for this sort of early phase clinical trial, so we can do that here. We've also shown that it's safe, so we have had no serious adverse events on our trial. Now, efficacy is not the aim of a phase one trial, we're not trying to show that, but I guess we hope to see some benefit for our patients, um, and I'm going to be upfront with you and say we haven't seen a clear sign of benefit. Some of them have had a slow down in their disease, disease a partial response, most likely due to the combination of treatments that are on. Nothing we can attribute to the CAR T cells directly. Now, the reason we think this is, is the target molecule. So again, Lisa talked about how important this is, choosing the right target. We're targeting something called GD2. GD2 is expressed on lots of tumors, but at very different levels. So in melanoma patients, most melanoma patients will probably have a little bit of GD2 in their tumor, but a lot of that tumor um, mass, the tissue, will be GD2 negative. So we can't, our CAR T cells can't touch that. They can only touch the cells from GD2 positive. So what we're now looking for is better tumor targets. So we've shown that we can make these CAR T cells. We've got them ready to go. And so we're looking for patients who might better benefit from this therapy. So just very quickly, I want to take you through the practicalities of what we do. So <laughs> I've simplified this down, but it really isn't, doesn't require that much from the patient. It's a blood draw, less blood than you would give to the Red Cross. Um, and usually they can do that at the data center for the nurses there are very good at handing over blood to us. Sometimes we send them down to SA Pathology if they've got really tricky veins, but usually we can get 200 mils without an issue. I take that back to the lab and the job is to get out the white blood cells. So this is the unseparated blood mix, and then you spin it in a column and that little layer there, you can see that that's the white blood cells. So that's the immune cells that you want to make the product from. All the red blood cells go down the bottom. Now, <laughs> there's a magical bit that happens in the middle <laughs> called genetic engineering, which I won't go into the details of, but it's basically introducing new DNA into the cells. The DNA is what instructs the cell to make the CAR that we're talking about. So the new CAR molecule on the surface, this new little tag that's going to help it find the tumor cell and attack the tumor cell. And finally, once we've made the cells, we have to do some quality control to check that they're pure, that we haven't introduced any sort of bugs or anything well because we're handling cells outside the body. Um, so while that's happening, they're frozen, and then they're taken to the patient's bedside, thawed out in a little water bath, and they get infused straight into the arm, very simple drip, takes about 10 minutes. So that bit is fairly straightforward as well. So here's the big question. Can we take this product and apply it to brain cancer? I see that there's sort of three main challenges or concerns that we have to address before we can take that step. The first is, do um, adult and childhood brain tumors 
stress that antigen I'm talking about, that molecule 22. Tannin T cells get into the brain. We've heard a lot about the blood brain barrier and the ability of access. And what will happen once they're in there? We're causing, we're deliberately causing inflammation. We're trying to get an immune response in your brain. Now, if you've ever had, and you know, a nasty viral infection or gastro, you know, it's very unpleasant. You get high fevers, um, you get some systemic effects. If that's localized in the brain, you can have um, neurological symptoms similar to what you get from disease progression, just from all the um, inflammation that's happening in the immune brain tumor. So. Here's my attempt at answering this question. So we've been working on this for several years, trying to get a better understanding of how our T cells might work in brain cancer. The first, and um, the good news, is that we found high levels of GD2 expression. So this is another one of those um, tissue sections we talk about slicing the tumor tissue with. Finally, um, in Lisa's image, she's stained with blue and brown. Here we've stained with fluorescent markers, so it kind of glows under the microscope. Um, the red is GD2. So there's lots of reds, that's good. <laughs> The really interesting thing is the green is T cells. So these aren't T cells, these are just normal T cells. So even um, in a brain cancer patient who hasn't had any treatment, the T cells are already trying to get in. So they're trying to do their job. They're just not managing to control the tumor. And so that's a good sign as well. So it means that our T cells should be able to follow them in and hopefully be better armed um, to destroy that tumor tissue. And I'll just point out here, because I think this is particularly interesting, that big black space there, that's a blood vessel. Okay, um, the white is sort of the outer edge, so imagine it's being, so the blood vessel's been cut. Um, and that's how the CAR T cells get in. So you can see them coming in through the blood, they're a blood cell, and coming out into the tissue. So that's what their, uh, their specialised function is, they're really well able to do this, better than a drug is. And it gives them a sort of smart drugs, um, biological, a live drug that can do this and get into the tumour. And in a mouse model, the CAR T cells can control tumour growth. But, but what's really difficult to assess, assess in any um, preclinical study is will it have serious side effects. So in our mice, we don't see um, any effect from treating the CAR T cells alone. We don't get any extra neurological symptoms. Um, but we really don't know what will happen in the patients, and that's what the phase one study is for. Um, so some indication from the US, they've tested other types of CAR T cells. There's, I think, three or four trials of CAR T cells in glioblastoma targeting different molecules. And those patients at most had some transient, uh, we call them grade three. So it is a serious side effect, but it went away again. So um, things like uh, mild seizure, uh, confusion, delirium, um, that were able to be resolved by the medical team. So certainly not a completely safe therapy, but not something um, that made them have to have to hold the trial. So they're able to continue. And some of those patients did see a benefit from the CAR T cell treatment. And um, sort of, I guess it's further encouragement, two of the patients on our clinical trial have had a brain metastasis um, and haven't had any neurological symptoms from the CAR T cell treatment. But again, the levels of that GD2 are very different. So in these patients, they would only have a little bit of that red, possibly none. We don't actually know what was in the brain yet. Um, where we're expecting the glioblastoma and the chance of brain cancer patients to have lots of GD2. So the T cells, there'll be lots of T cells going in, hopefully, that's what we want to happen, but also lots of inflammation. That's what we have to um, sort of expect and try and control for when we're writing the clinical protocol and take a lot of time thinking about how we're going to manage. So I'm going to sum up by talking through what the two clinical trials will be, um, and then I'm very happy to take more questions on this kind of part of the slide that you listed. Um, so the children's trial is called the Levi's Cats trial, um, and Levi is a, a patient seen by Dr. David Ziegler, who's at the Sydney Children's Hospital, um, who is a wonderful pediatric oncologist who specialises in this very rare, very aggressive form of um, children's glioma, which has a pretty much zero survival rate. So the patients cannot be operated on because of the location of the brain tumour. They can only see, receive radiotherapy and, and then eventually the same one. So we're most advanced with this trial. Um, the clinical protocol has been written to begin with, so it's under consideration at the um, ethics committee there and they've already come back to us with one round of questions. So one of the reasons this process takes so long is it's a sort of back and forth process. We did first in human trials, so something that's never been done before. Everyone's very cautious. Um, so we've already had sort of one round of questions that we've responded to and now it's under consideration again. But we are still hopeful that we'll be able to work in this year in 2021. Um, and so we'll do the manufacturing here using that process that I outlined and we'll ship um, the cells to Sydney and then David will be the and the patients will 
probably staying in hospital. Um, we're now talking about um, possibly two weeks as an inpatient and then staying close by the hospital for another two weeks. Um, whereas in our melanoma trial, we really just saw them overnight and stayed overnight and came home again. So that's part of the advanced kind of extra monitoring we're going to do with this really vulnerable patient group. Now the adult trial um, is a little um, behind the children's trial. It's going to be here at the Royal Adelaide Hospital though and um, Michael Brown will be the principal investigator so um, he's sort of, if you have questions he, he can also address them to him. We're still writing the clinical protocol here and part of it I think Ganesh and outlined really well is trying to decide how to slot into the standard of care. We're not going to take away standard of care, the patients will still get um, surgery, uh, radiotherapy and hemozolomide. At what point do you take the blood to make the CAR T cells and then at what point do you give the CAR T cell infusion? It would probably be after. So you might take the blood around the time of surgery, do the manufacturing and then wait for recurrence and then offer the CAR T cells. The CAR T cells will be ready to go. That's, that's the proposed protocol, but as I say, it's still um, under discussion with the um, doctors who will be involved and the um, community, the service members committee. So, Yes, please keep an eye on both of these trials. I um, sometimes get emails asking me, oh, I hear you've got a clinical trial plan, when should I go on it? And it's really hard to reply to and say, well, I don't, I don't know. Um, so I try and kind of give a realistic expectation of just how long this plan is set. So although we are ready to go in the sense that we have our product and we know what we want to do, um, getting approvals and making sure our clinical protocol is as well written and as safe as possible is what we're working on now. And I'd like to, again, as everyone here has, thank the NRF for the, I mean, the, all that sort of preclinical development where we showed that it was a good idea to use these CAR T cells in relation to the support of the NRF.